Okay, it's time to start on the head. Now I've got me a piece of uh, two inch basswood here. There you go, this is two inches right on the button. And for our simplicity, we're just going to do the head straight out from the body. But I'll show you how to make it curve. So I'm lining this up, the grain's running up and down this direction, okay? Draw my lines here. Okay, now this is going to be scrap. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and extend this on out like that. Okay, and then I thought of something. I'm just going to try this out. I just thought of this a while ago. I'm going to leave a little notch there. Maybe something down here like that, okay? And you'll see why later on. All right, now, when you cut out a pattern, a drawing from a pattern, or when you cut out a blank from a drawing on the pattern, remember that this is the finished piece. It's not the block. So when you cut out, you want to leave a little extra on the outside because if you cut on your draw line from the pattern you're cutting on the finish line so what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to kind of add a little extra wood here because you can always take off the wood but it's hard to add it back on once you take it off. Okay? So let's go over the bandsaw and we'll cut this fella out.
got her cut out. She's pretty rough, right? So we can uh, find a pencil here somewhere. Here's his jawbone running with the grain of the wood comes up like that. All right. So that's going to run right in there across like that. So what we can do, now if you don't want to do this, you don't have to, but I'm just going to thin this thing down just a little. saying, gee, was it really worth it to take off those two little pieces of wood? Probably not, for some reason. If you're like me, you probably think, well, gee, if I can do it on the saw, that'll just save me whittling it, when actually it probably never saved me anything at all. But anyway, there's our blank now. So now we'll go back over to the carbon bench. Well, my big idea didn't work out, so forget what I said earlier. Anyway, instead of having those, uh, that, uh, whatever you call it, back here on the back. Just go ahead and cut that off straight back, but still leave the neck elongated a little. You want it longer than the finished neck, okay? And also what I did after I looked at the block, I went back to the saw and took a little off each side, okay, to narrow down that horse, because it was way too thick, okay? Here's an excellent book. If you like horses and you plan on doing a lot, a lot more of them, this is by Sam Savitt. He used to draw, uh, draw the horses for the Lone Ranger comic books years ago. I'm sure some of you uh, remember those. See, there's this Roy Rogers, Gene Autry, Lone Ranger. Anyway, these books uh, I'm sure are still available. You can probably find them on uh, Amazon.com. This one belongs to me. And it's just filled full of pictures of horses and different poses. Like here it shows them going completely through one gate. There's the run, the pace, the jump. It's just all kinds of pictures in here that uh, might help you in coming up with designs for a horse and also at the same time will help you carve. And this is a good example of how it will help you carve. Now the way he draws his horse, horse's head, he uses a triangle method which in our case works to our advantage. So. Just taking the center of the horse's head, if you draw using his method, if you draw a triangle, just imagine this is going to go all up in there, and then you come back and you draw it like that. See there, we've worked out the planes of the horse's head, right there. Now, you'll see what I mean by that here in just a minute. But first, let's get back to this area here. Because what we want to do now is rough out our block. Now, the horse has a large jaw muscle right here. So let's find a better picture of that. There you can see it. See it here? How it comes back here? It's just flat. There's hardly any 
any uh, definition to it. It just curves up like that. So let's just go ahead and draw that in there. Like that, okay? Now on the ears, let's look at our big horse here. When you're doing your horse's head and you're doing the ears and things like that, you want everything, you want the best composition. You want everything to complement everything else if possible. Now I think back in the beginning of the video series I said, uh, I don't want the cock leg in front of the standing leg. I'd rather have the cock leg behind the standing leg. So when I mount this horse, he's going to be mounted so the viewer looks at him from this angle, okay? So now doing that, I ask myself, well, what do I want? Do I want the ear, one ear, which ear do I want forward, and which ear do I want back? Well, I think composition-wise, I'm going to put the ear back here that's more upright than the ear in front. Because when the viewer looks at it, he can see this ear plainly enough, and it's not blocking this here, here, back there. But if you turn it around, look what happens. See? That back ear, it almost disappears. And he almost lost his bedroll there. It's back on there. So I'm going to cock that front ear forward and let the back ear stand up. All right? So I'm just going to go right ahead and draw that in there so I don't forget. Okay? So right now, let's just go ahead and rough out this character before we do anything else. I'm trying to stay away from those ears because I'm not ready to carve those yet. Same thing on this side. like when I'm singing songs. This area does not want to cooperate. There it is. That's just going the wrong way. I'm 
one thing when you're carving the horse head separate, leave this area back here alone because we want as much material back here as possible to give us as much material as we'll need to match this thing up to the body, okay? That's important. All right, let's just go ahead. We'll find the center again here, which is actually about right there. And let's just draw the separation of our ears. Okay, like that. So now what we want to do is take out that notch. like that. Now, the most fragile part on this horse is this front ear because it's shooting out there across the grain. This is kind of fragile too, but not quite as fragile as that up there. So remember that. Now, also, this ear sticking up, this one's laying down. So we can go ahead and cut off this ear. I think you need to watch me struggle with this thing, so I'll come back once I get the darn thing off of here. Okay, got those ears done. So I've uh, redrawn my uh, little triangles on here. I've added a couple bumps here for, the, for his eyes. And here on the side, I'll draw that down a little. Notice this ear looks real long. Well, that's because it's sitting up on top of the head. This one here is kind of laying down, so it's going to come down a little farther. Here's his jaw. Just make a little line in there like that. Okay, now here's where these triangles start coming into play. Now, just by taking this one out right here, Taking this one out over here. Then we're going to take a scoop out right here. Scoop out right here.
See how quickly it assumes the shape of a horse's head? Just by taking one, two, three planes off of a piece of wood, we can see the whole anatomy almost of this horse's head. There's a little indentation right back here where the jaw comes up. I already did it on that side. Now we can narrow down this area. Okay, see that didn't take long, did it? Now here's a little trick. Clean this area up here a little bit. Get some space between those ears. Here's a little trick. When you're doing a horse, we know we're going to be looking at him from this side. So, what do we want? We want to be able to see that eye. But, this eye is going to be on the other side and not really that obvious to a viewer. So what we can do is we can hide that eye by making his mane come down like that and down this way like that and that way it looks good I think but it also saves you from having to carve that other eye of course you don't need to tell that person that buying that you're carving but that's what you did Just uh, indicate that here.
that is my triangle. I think on this video all we're going to be able to do is just block it out. And then we'll come back in the next video and do the detail. put that hair over on this side of the head we kind of and then carve this down to make it stand off there we kind of narrowed this side of the head so we have to carve the opposite side to match that which is what I'm doing now I'm leaving these ears alone for a purpose because they're fragile. We're going to get to those later on, but right now I'm just going to leave them, leave them sitting up there because I don't want them breaking off. But we can carefully carve all around them with no problem. Trying to get rid of all the saw, saw and surface so I can surface so I can see this thing. Now, 
for the main. We're going to use this main to describe to describe to hide the joint when we put this on the uh, body. So I'm not going to really be concerned about that main right now. Looking pretty good. Now for the nose, your grain's slanting down, remember, and the nose is going to sit right here on each side, so we can just indicate that by doing that. Keep it even on both sides. That's pretty good. Take a little off here, around his mouth. Again, constantly be aware of keeping it even. Now this kind of comes in here. Like that, see we're creating that back part of his jaw. See there? One thing, after you draw your blank, or draw your drawing on your blank and you're whittling on your blank, forget this. Because uh, this, this piece of wood will tell you where it wants to go as you're whittling on it. Because every horse is going to be different. This horse is not going to look like that horse. I don't want it to look like that horse. I've already carved that horse, so I'm going to carve a new horse. Now let's go ahead and work on this. Our producer back there is going to constantly keep aware, keep me aware of the time that I've got on this. <laughs> Give me hand signals again. What? 15 minutes so far. Some of these videos are pretty long. 30, I think that last one we did was over 30 minutes long. I apologize if they're long, but They're just going to have to be that way. That's why I don't put them on YouTube. YouTube's got such a time restriction. We'd never get to do what we're doing here if we had to do it on YouTube. So, a little extra money that it costs me. Well, actually, it's not that little. But the extra money it costs me to pay for a different hosting service, which allows me to download lengthy uh, lengthy videos is certainly worth it yes I think so okay and I'm going to continue this on around here and just carve a little lip on this guy right there I'm going to bring his lower lip there's the back of his mouth Just a little curve to it. Like that. Okay, now. Sink my knife in right here. Just sink her in there like that. Take a little notch out right there. Looks good. Looks 
good to me. Make that notch just a little bit bigger. Gabby Hayes would say just a little bit. There you go, that looks a lot better. And let's do this one over here. Dish that out right there like that. And carve on around. Be careful here because your knife blade is going with the grain. So I'm control it. Saw marks. Push that out there a little more. Carry that wrinkle back just a little bit more. It's looking pretty good. profile down here just a little bit. Just a little bit. Looks a lot better. See that here? Let's move it over here to the dark, dark area so it shows up better. Because I think this is a good place to stop. We've pretty well got all the areas blanked out. And you notice it didn't take us very long to do this at all. <laughs> You're probably seeing <saying> right, <laughs> but you just got to practice. Oh, reliable singing today, isn't it? 